if there was one most important thing that a punter should look for in a in a given race or horse? Um, what do you think? No, it's, it's you know it, 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 I, I say it can be. Uh, a number of things, you know. The, you know, the, obviously, the going is very important to some horses. Is it the most important thing in a race? The going. It's yes. not the most important thing because because a lot of people will tell you that that the very best horses probably go on most goings, and it's true. probably true. But but you're talking with the exception of the very best, mm -hmm. you know, because the very best of the very best because they always find a way to win, you know. And that's where they are, where they are. Um, on a daily basis, the ground can be very important. Um, obviously, the look and the fitness of the horse is obviously very important. And the, the form, the trainer form, the jockey form, I'm not sure that it is so important because at some point it's going to become irrelevant or it's going to become, you know, there are going to be, they are going to hit form and they're going to lose form, you know, so. You know, you could back at the day it's going to lose form, the trainer lose form, you could back at the day it's going to hit form, you know, so. When you get on a horse, I mean, how often at the start of a race do you get on a horse, do you, do you, you know this is a good and this? Um, or, or, or conversely, how often do you get on a horse uh, and you know, no matter what you do, this isn't going to... You see, they're all different. You get great reports from horses at home that are flying up the gallops and they beat every horse on sight and they go racing and they just disappoint. And you get the complete opposite, the horse that, that doesn't impress everyone at home, that's lazy and looks slow and comes to the races and just turns inside out and, and um, you, you do get a lot, of, you do get a lot of, of very good horses that are like that, 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 that save their best for, for, for the race. Um, Has there been horses that you've been on that have taken you by surprise, uh, how good they are? Well, yeah, yeah, you know, we've had a few along the way. Um, as I said, some are not always the greatest workhorses. Um, Binocular is a horse that, you know, he's always had his problems, but he's never been a really good workhorse. And um, so, there are times, as I said, when you go to races and, and you get disappointed because the the morning glory horses they call them disappoints, and 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 there are days when you go and the lazy slow one turns into a champion. Were you? Aware of the massive Twitter campaign, re sports personality of the world. Um, not not really, but um, Claire Balding is a pretty good friend of yes. of mine, and to be fair, she made me very much aware of it. And um, it was probably through her persuasion that I decided to join Twitter. And um, look, it's it's a it's it's a great concept. It's it's a, it's a, it's a great way of of. Um, Communicating with people, and you know, and you do, and you do it, you do that. You know, you the well. word the word can spread very, very quickly. Um, it was amazing, and and you know th that wouldn't have happened obviously without the public that were kind enough to to make all those phone calls, both in and within and without of racing. You know, um, that wouldn't have happened as is it. So and I see you cheated at the awards. You you knew before I did watching at home on telly that you'd won. It. Yeah, yeah. I um, I was sat in front of, and it came up in the, it came up in the, autocue. on the auto queue beforehand. Um, so you see, you worked in telly so often, so, you need to look at the auto queue. Well, it was parked right in front of me, and it, and it said the winner is. So I, I was struggling not to read it. I, I did feel a little hopeful that you know, I wasn't aware that any of the other, um, ten nominees were Arsenal fans, but I. I I, I was pretty pleased when I saw Cesc Fabregas coming out, you know, because I, I thought that, you know, if there had been two or three other Arsenal fans in the in the lineup, I'd have been disappointed. When I was a kid growing up, for some reason, probably even before my earliest memories, I got a, I I, I got a bit of a fixation with with Liam Brady and Pat Jennings and Frank Stapleton. There was a like Pat Rice. There was quite a lot of Irish. Footballers there at the time, and um, for some reason, I I, I, I think uh, if I remember correctly, there was an FA Cup final on. I think it might have been the '79 or '80 Cup final that Arsenal won. I, I can remember my mother telling me I had to get a yellow Arsenal strip afterwards because I think they won. And I think they played in the away. I think it was they the did. yellow away Alan strip. Sunderland scored the winning goal. Yeah, and um, I wanted the yellow away strip, which I, you know, I'm. 
I, my mother very kindly got me, you know, so... Um, and Chippy Brady was, Liam Brady was your Liam, first footballing hero? Or? Liam Brady, yeah. Um, you know, and then because obviously he played for Ireland as well. Um, and, and I think, you know, as himself and Pat Jennings were the, the, the main reasons that, um, that I support Arsenal. Are you a passive fan in the stand? Do you shout and swear? Do you a little bit, yeah. I'm a bit disappointed to say I'm quite rowdy whenever it happens. Um, but I, I'm lucky enough to get to the Emirates quite a lot. And uh, favourite Arsenal moment that you've seen? Um, we've we, we've had a few. I I suppose the 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 2004 campaign when they went unbeaten is you know has been an amazing achievement. One of the th great memories, I think, is Martin Keown jumping up with Ruud van Nistelrooy whenever he missed the penalty. I, my disappointing match, I went to the, the cup final in, in the Stade of France, the Champions League final, and um, obviously uh, Jens Lehmann got sent off, I think it was, yeah. That was probably my, my, my most disappointing match. Watching them beat Barcelona at, at, at the Emirates. It was an amazing match to watch. Um, my favourite goal, I think, probably Dennis Burkamp's flick when he got beat Newcastle and he flicked it round. You know, I thought, you know, it takes a special footballer to be able to do that. One of your favourite horses, certainly my favourite in recent years that you rode, was Richard Lyman. Uh, I mean, you've, you've you've said I think elsewhere that you felt it was what underrated that horse. Yeah, yeah. Not that he was underrated because he, you know, he wasn't the best horse, um, but what he had was an unbelievable will to win. And obviously, I got a lot of accolades for my ride of winning on him at Cheltenham, um, which was fantastic. But I, I kind of felt uh, uh, that that the horse never got the credit that he deserved, you know, and. Um, he just had an amazing will to win, had an amazing heart, and just a very likable horse. And um, you know, he won twice in him at the Sheldon Festival, and unfortunately, he got tragically yeah. killed in the Irish Grand National. And uh, I watched that day, and I remember watching mm. and thinking, "Oh, it's all right. It's getting up." And yeah. then he 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 it. fell. He fell, and the horse behind him hit him, and basically, you know. Uh, um, and the way you got talk about it in the book, got very injured. Yeah, it, it was very emotional, you know, because he was a horse that had given me one of my greatest days in racing, you know, and um, he won twice at the Cheltenham Festival, and um, you know those horses that are willing, you know that, you know he 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 gave you everything, you know he was, um, as, as I said, he was if he was if he was a human being or a boxer, you wouldn't have wanted to get into the ring with him, you know, because. He might not have been technically the best, but certainly he was probably the bravest, you know. I've probably been guilty in years gone by when I was in that situation, watching those situations with you, whereby you, you walk in the ambulance, whatever, in the car, straight, straight away. And uh, I don't know, in years gone by, I might have thought, bloody hell, that's, you know, heartless or whatever, just walking off straight away and the horse is dying. Yeah. But obviously I've read your book now and the way you talk about it, you, you, you don't want to be there. You need to get out of there. You need to get out of there. You don't, you don't want to see the big screens going around and, and a horse being humanly d destroyed, you know, it's especially one that you've ridden. Even the lesser horses that it's happened to, I, I, can't, I can't watch it happening. But, you know, tragedy happens in every walk of life. It's not just an horse racing, you know, so. But with Wichita, it was the thing that but, but, the horse was fine, he was getting up and then... Yeah, you know, I, I thought he was going to be okay, you know. Yeah from the noise that he was making and the, when he tried to get up, the, the groans. And I, and I kind of remember sitting on his head to make sure he didn't try and get up because I thought he was going to cause himself more pain. And once I had a vet there and that, I just wanted to get out of there, you know. And, uh, I, didn't, I didn't want to hear any noises or, you know, okay. so. And because we then see the jockey come back out in different colours for the next yeah. race or whatever, we think, bloody hell. But jockeys do care? Yeah, I think the, what, what people tend to forget is that not only jockeys, but the stable lads that look after the horses, the trainer, the owner, um, you know, they, they, their horse becomes their life, you know. And, um, you know, the girl that looked after which alignment, you know, well, he was her life, you know. And even though I only rode him and, and saw him, you know, yeah. not as frequently as what she did, um, 
you, you, you get involved in horse racing and horses because you love them growing up as a kid and they're what you want to get in, you know, they're, they're, what, they're, what, they're what make you happy, they're, they are basically what makes you happy, you know. If you're lucky enough to have a good run where you win um, quite a lot, then you want to win all the time. And unfortunately in life, in sport, that is not possible. Um, but trying to get that to register in your head sometimes is not very easy. And, you know, you can ride two or three or four winners in a day, whatever it may be. But if you're after having five or six rides and a couple of them got beat or one of them fell that might have won, then much and all as you enjoy the other winners, the one that that fell or that didn't win when you go home is the one that's going to bug you. It's the one that you'll think about most of the night because it could have been one more and then it could have been a really good day. And feel free to name these yeah, yeah. for all punters yeah. watching. Are there horses you know of with history of winning who now, under new rules, will not win another race? Yeah, there are a few. Um, would you care to name them, Mr. McLeod? Uh, I wouldn't be as uh, shameful to, to name some per owner's horse that might not win again, but <laughs> I did win him one last year at, at, the, at, 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 at the entry in, in May of Nigel Twist and Davis's and um, I met the owners in Carlisle um, about a month ago and I said to them, I said, lads, I hate to disappoint you before you're going out, I said, but he's going to find it very difficult to win um, with the way the new rules are, I said, because, you know, he was just a very lazy type of horse, but at the same time, um, he just needed motivating, you know, it wasn't the, the case of you know, building him into something that he didn't want to do. When you got him motivated, he did do it. You know, I, I always, I think in any walk of life or in any sport, I think you have to believe in yourself. You have to have belief because if, if you don't, then no one else will. And I, there's, you know, there's a huge difference between an arrogant, someone who's arrogant and someone who's got bad belief. I, I always felt that from a very young age that I had belief in myself. Um, there wasn't one moment, one uh, not, not, later on, one you know where you thought yes. Not 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 really. But as a jump jockey, the the great thing about the, the the sport is that you're never in any position to get ahead of yourself or think that you're above it or better than it. Because um, you know, I keep pointing out it's one of the very few things in life that the only thing behind you is the ambulance, and um, I've ended up in it enough times to realise that I ain't unbreakable or I ain't invincible.